Here I want to demonstrate the usefulness of the COUNTIF formula. And when you look here you can see the syntax of the COUNTIF formula. It's always, as all formulas do, they begin with the equal sign and then the operation or the function that the formula is going to um, compute and then the syntax of what you want that function to do. Okay. In this case, um, this is very off. This hop happens very often with a list of textual data. You've gathered data. In this case, we're looking at uh, a simple question like, "What's the favorite month of the year?" And people respond from a drop-down list, perhaps with one of the twelve possible months, and you end up with a list of words. And you would like to convert this into some chartable quantitative data. Sure, you could manually count them all, how many people said September, and over here you could, you know, redo that September, and underneath you could count how many, okay, there's one, two, three, four, and you go through the list and so on, and finally you could come back over and enter your data. Four people said September. Okay. But with typical survey data, you can often get hundreds and hundreds of entries. And, um, and there are a couple problems with doing this. Number one, it's very time consuming that you have to go and count and convert the responses into a numerical figure. And number two, it in introduces a lot of potential user error that you miss something, you miscount, uh, you overcount. Uh, both ways are problematic. <laughs> So we have this COUNTIF formula and what it will do, and if you look at the formula syntax here, we're starting with count if, so you want the spreadsheet to count if there's a certain value that you're looking for. And the range area, you're telling it where to look. So basically you're saying count this value by looking at all this data. So that's how that works. So if I want to count September, how many times September appears in this range? I'm going to start with the equal sign, as I always do, and the function, which is count if. And as any spreadsheet will do, it will prompt you for the, the formulas that begin with what you're typing. You can simply click on the one, if you'd like to, and it starts everything, the operator and the open parentheses to begin the syntax. Now I could manually figure out what the range is. In this case it would be B2 all the way to B72. I want to look in all of that data and find how many times September appears. So I could do that, B2 through B72. Manually type it, B2 colon B72. 72. But this introduces a potential new problem too, which again is user error and data entry. So the more you can use your mouse to select the data, the better. So I'm going to delete that. And with my cursor right after the open parentheses, I'm just going to highlight the data and let the spreadsheet fill in the range. I'll just keep scrolling down until I have everything. Okay. And when you look, you can see it filled in the range for me. And I'll scroll back up. My cursor is still flashing there. You don't want to click anywhere else yet at this point because you want to finish off the, the syntax of the argument. Okay, so I filled in the range. So I'm saying I want you to do a count if. I want you to look in this range. And then I need to put a comma before I tell it what to look for. So comma, and because I'm calculating how many times September appears, I want you to look for September. And again, using your mouse is always best. You simply have to click on any instance of September. No matter where it is in the list, it doesn't matter. You're just telling it to look for that instance. So I'm just going to click on September here. It puts in B2. I could have easily clicked on September here and it would have been B10. Or I could have clicked on September here and it would be B18. It really doesn't matter. Okay. Finally, I have to close my argument with a closed parentheses and press Enter. And lo and behold, it counted four, which is correct. Okay. For October, if we look down the list, there is no October. So I could easily eyeball zero, but 
because I don't want to introduce any error on my part, I'm going to do the same formula. Count, and you have to spell it correctly, C-O-U-N-T-I-F. Okay, and I'll just click on it so it starts everything off for me. I'm going to highlight my range again because that's the first part of the argument is the range. Got it. It's the same range, of course, B2 through B72, comma, and then the value. And because that value doesn't exist, I can just leave that blank. Okay, if I just put nothing and close the argument, I get zero. However, if I want to be more accurate, I could put the word in, although now I know there's nothing. If you're going to manually enter the word, you need to put that word in quotation marks. So I'm going to put open quotation marks. I'm looking for October, October, close quotation marks. So you can see October is in quotation marks there. And I'll press enter, and no surprise, it's zero. Okay. And the others progress the same way. How many times does November appear? Well, I use count equals countif. I select the range, comma, and then I click on any instance of November, and it will tell me how many times November appears. If I'm doing a combination of months, I just do that twice. And you notice in the formula, there's only one equal sign. A common mistake is people will do equal count if range value, and then they'll do plus, and then they do another equals. Okay, there's no equals. So you do count if for September, just like you did up here, plus, and then you do another count if for October, and it will add those two counts. This will be the same for anything in column C for summer equals count if. Now you're highlighting the data in column C, comma, and indicating how many times winter is. So I'd click on winter.